So hello and welcome to our podcast. And it's a great pleasure to welcome Dr. Paul Marek, who is an author of several COVID treatment protocols. And we all know this math plus and I must protocols that Dr. Marek uh, is authoring. Uh, and we've seen them on FLCC. So Dr. Marek, thank you very much for being with us. And it's a, such a great honor to have you on our channel. Sure, it's a pleasure to be here today. So likewise, I'm delighted to have Professor Anja Buranova this evening. And Professor Anja is Professor at School of Systems Biology and Director of Chronic Metabolic and Rare Diseases at George Mason University. So welcome to our podcast. Thank you, Valentina. So we live now in a very strange times, especially when we have vaccines, COVID variants, people who are vaccinated and they become infected. Uh, there is lots of misinformation on all sorts of channels. And now we have the Delta variant and questions on how effective these vaccines are against it. So it's a huge mess, and we would like Dr. Marek to, to get your view on all this. So in particular, we know that you work in ICU and see the situation there on a daily basis. So where we are now at this pandemic and how the disease has changed since the first wave and how effective these protocols are against Delta? Yes. So... We are definitely in a mess. You're absolutely correct. And it seems that the mess is getting worse. Um, unfortunately, there's been a massive misinformation, disinformation, and lack of transparency. So I think clinicians are struggling to find the truth. And if they can't find the truth, you know, how can poor patients and general people decipher what's going on? So I think it's been a tragic misinformation. In terms of Delta, it's a really big issue. So I can tell you our ICU, maybe two or three weeks ago, virtually had no COVID patients. However, that changed in the last two weeks. We had a massive influx of COVID. These people are sicker and they're younger and they're dying. So this Delta is no joke. So, you know, our ICU is now full of COVID. And it seems for reasons that are not exactly clear to be targeting younger and younger patients. So almost all the patients in our ICU now are less than 60. Whereas before, you know, most of them were over the age of 60. Delta seems to replicate to reach very high concentrations so that the, the, the window is, is reduced so they become symptomatic shorter and they develop shortness of breath sooner and they come to the ICU sooner and they seem to have overwhelming infection. Most of our patients are unvaccinated and that has to do with the demographics in the area that I live in. But we have had one or two patients who are fully vaccinated and we've had a whole host of patients who are immunocompromised. So kidney transplant patients um, who have been vaccinated don't develop a good immune response. And they seem to be you know, extremely vulnerable to, um, to the Delta variant. In terms of treatment, you know, COVID is a very difficult disease to treat. It results in severe hyperinflammatory response. And what we found is that the later patients present and the more the profound the inflammation, the more difficult it is to reverse. And this particularly holds true with Delta. So when patients arrive late, they have profound inflammation. And we're finding that we have to escalate our therapy and we have to add salvage treatments to our protocol just because these patients are presenting later with such profound inflammation. So I think, you know, the bottom line is that COVID is not going away. Delta is a very scary virus. And you know what? We may have even worse ones down the road, Lambda, and then what comes next? So it seems that this virus is outsmarting us 
although it only has a little piece of RNA, it seems to be much smarter than us humans and is always two steps ahead. So we have to be cognizant of that. So this is not a time to let down one's guard. One has to do everything one has to prevent getting COVID. And most importantly, if people present with COVID, fever, malaise, tiredness, they need treatment day one, regardless of a PCR or any other test, because the longer you wait, the more severe the symptoms and the more difficult it is to treat. This is such a vital concept, and I don't understand why the major healthcare organizations don't emphasize this really important point, is that you don't want to wait. The NIH says, wait until you can't breathe. Well, by that time, you're going to be dead. So really, the, the, the most important thing is prevent yourself getting COVID. If you do it, you want to start treatment on day one. And it may make sense to have a COVID emergency kit in your house so that you have you were already prepared to treat this onslaught when it happens. And you know what we think is if you treat people efficiently and aggressively upfront, you're going to lessen the risk of the post-COVID syndrome. Mm -hmm. So you know we think post-COVID happens in people who are inadequately treated or were not treated aggressively up front. So those were my opening remarks. If you have any other questions, or I would be happy to, to, to entertain them. a recent study out of the US showing that symptomatic people, so people who have symptomatic COVID, who squish this in their nose, are 20 times less likely, let me say that again, a simple intervention, 20 times less likely to need to go to hospital. So this ridiculous assertion of the WHO, the NIH, the CDC, the NICE, to do nothing to do nothing is an abomination. I think it's an abomination because there are, there are very effective methods that people can do at home. 